Welcome to the lecture series on Environment and Ecology presented by Mentors for IS in association with Bangalore IS Academy and Namak APSC. So in the last video, we had actually started off with functions of an ecosystem under which we had started the discussion about energy flow where I did mention that we have three concepts under this particular topic that is energy flow. One is food chain. The other is food web and finally ecological pyramids. So we have already completed the discussion with respect to food chains and food webs. Whereas in this particular video, we will be covering ecological pyramids. That is the third concept under the first function of an ecosystem that is energy flow. Now, this is actually an important concept under environmental ecology. So I'm pretty sure everybody has some understanding of ecological pyramids. So an ecological pyramid actually refers to a graphical representation designed to show the biomass or bioproductivity at each trophic level in a given ecosystem. So if you now picture a pyramid, the pyramid will always have a larger base which reduces in width as you start moving away from the base and the pyramid itself may be made up of several blocks. Similar is an ecological pyramid where instead of blocks, the pyramid is made up of bars where each bar represents a different trophic level and the energy, biomass or the number of organisms at that particular trophic level. So we have already discussed what a trophic level represents in the previous video. So in the ecological pyramid, each block that you are able to see in this ecological pyramid actually represents either the energy, biomass or the number of organisms at that particular trophic level. So here I actually want you to remember two things. First, the height of the bar, the height of each bar that you are able to see in the ecological pyramid is always constant. Whereas the width or you could call it the length of the bar varies with respect to the quantity of the aspect being measured. That is the energy, biomass or the number of organisms. So in this particular diagram or the image that you are able to see, you should be able to notice that the height of each and every bar is, the, is almost constant at, is almost constant or the same at each and every level. But the length varies with respect to the quantity being measured. So obviously the primary producers are always larger in number because of which the lowest level which we have already discussed earlier at food chain usually it will always start with the producers. They are always larger in number. The second point I want you to remember is that the ecological pyramid will always start with producers. Since the primary producers produce their own food and with that our ecological pyramid should always start and only from there on can you move on to primary consumers, secondary and finally tertiary consumers. So any food chain that you take as of today humans will usually occupy the tertiary or the secondary level. So in any ecological pyramid humans will always be at the topmost level or at the second most top uh, uh, at the second most top level in any ecological pyramid so next what we'll do is we look into the three different types of ecological pyramids so we have the pyramid of numbers we have the pyramid of biomass and finally we have the pyramid of energy so we will go through each and every category of ecological pyramid starting with the pyramid of numbers Okay, the pyramid of numbers represents the number of different organisms that occupies each trophic level without considering the size or biomass at any particular level. So the pyramid of numbers may be an upright pyramid or an inverted pyramid. So we have different types of pyramid of numbers. See one type is pyramid of numbers. Under pyramid of numbers we have different types of pyramid of numbers. So we will first take up 
that is upright pyramid when it comes to pyramid of numbers so you should be able to see these diagrams below in this particular slide over here so the upright pyramid may be seen in a grassland ecosystem in a pond ecosystem or a forest ecosystem so if you take this particular grassland ecosystem over here the grasses occupy the lowest trophic level because of their abundance the next level will be occupied by primary consumers such as grasshoppers where the number of grasshoppers will be less than that of grass the next level is occupied by frogs or rats which is less than the number of grasshoppers because frogs feed on grasshoppers and finally the next trophic level is occupied by a tertiary consumer such as a such as a hawk or a peacock so here we see that the number of individuals decreases with every trophic level now this is a pyramid of numbers and therefore we are representing the number of organisms at each trophic level in a food chain so since the number of organisms decreases as we move on through different trophic levels in a food chain so here this particular grassland ecosystem has an upright pyramid of numbers same similar is a pond ecosystem as well as a forest ecosystem next we look into an inverted pyramid so now if you consider a tree ecosystem here we should be able to see the same pyramid of numbers but here we have an inverted pyramid an inverted pyramid of numbers is seen usually in a tree ecosystem where the first trophic level only contains a tree the next trophic level is occupied by birds which feed on the fruits and are greater in number the next level is occupied by parasites or even hyperparasites which feed of the birds and hence they are greater in number so here i want you to remember that when it comes to pyramid of numbers you may have an upright pyramid or you might even have an inverted pyramid it is not restricted also you must realize that it is actually difficult to count all the organisms in an ecosystem say for example in this particular diagram that you are able to see in this inverted pyramid it is actually difficult for us to consider or count the number of herbivores that we have even if you are able to count the number of birds in the particular tree how can you count the number of parasites even if you are able to count the number of parasites how can you count the number of hyperparasites it is very very difficult therefore the pyramid of numbers does not represent a complete definition of the structure of an ecosystem so many of the times in order to understand the interaction between different organisms in an ecosystem the pyramid of numbers is never the first choice the reason being that in the next slide you should be able to see here it is not an inverted pyramid neither is it an upright pyramid so in the earlier case itself i told you that whenever you take a tree tree ecosystem a tree ecosystem is always an inverted pyramid but at the same time if you consider this particular diagram over here the same tree ecosystem is in the shape of a spindle now why because we are considering the tree that is just one in number then we move on to the herbivores where we have a number of birds and maybe other insects then we are considering the carnivores instead of parasites where the number of carnivores now starts to decrease so neither is it an upright pyramid neither is it an inverted pyramid at the same time if we now consider a grassland ecosystem so in the first case i did mention that a grassland ecosystem is always an upright pyramid but in this particular case that you take where i'm considering grass then the number of rabbits and the number of fleas which are like parasites and which might which might feed off on rabbits so in this particular case it's like you have an upright pyramid and on top of this upright pyramid i have an inverted pyramid so the same grassland ecosystem is no longer an upright pyramid so considering the any ecosystem that you take within that ecosystem considering the number of organisms that you take and the specific food chain the shape of the number of pyramids sorry the pyramid of numbers might vary and therefore the pyramid of numbers is not the best option for us to study the interaction between organisms in an ecosystem so i hope by this the concept of pyramid of numbers is actually clear
नेक्स्ट वी मूव ऑन टू पिरामिड ऑफ बायोमास because it is always important that when when compared to pyramid of numbers the pyramid of bimoth always gives us a better understanding of the energy contained in each level the pyramid of biomass is considered to overcome the shortcomings of pyramid of numbers so here in a pyramid of biomass we will consider the total weight of all organisms at each trophic level so when i mention the total weight i am actually referring to the total dry weight so now you might have a doubt what is dry weight dry weight is that weight of biomass by excluding the weight of water in the body so if you take any organism for example if you take a cow you will have to only consider the weight of the biomass excluding the water weight in that particular cow or that particular organism so a pyramid of biomass is usually determined by collecting all organisms occupying each trophic level separately and measuring their dry weight this overcomes the size difference problem or the number problem because you are only considering the biomass so here in this particular diagram to your right you should be able to notice so i did mention if you consider a tree ecosystem the tree ecosystem has to be an inverted pyramid but at the same time i also mentioned that the same tree ecosystem in a pyramid of numbers if you consider a different food chain it might become a spindle so this kind of problem never arises in a pyramid of biomass so if we are considering a tree ecosystem as you can see in the second diagram over here the same tree ecosystem will always be an upright pyramid it does not matter what kind of food chain you will consider in a tree ecosystem if it is a pyramid of biomass it will always be an upright pyramid never will it change with respect to the food chain within that ecosystem if you take an ecosystem it will always be an upright pyramid or an inverted pyramid it the shape of the pyramid or the orientation of the pyramid will not change with respect to the food chain within that ecosystem therefore it becomes easier to study the interaction between organisms when it comes to a pyramid of biomass rather than a pyramid of numbers okay so here you should be able to see uh i i want you to remember here when it comes to a pyramid of biomass uh when you consider a terrestrial ecosystem a terrestrial ecosystem will always be upright a terrestrial ecosystem will always have an upright pyramid with a larger base occupied by the primary producers because obviously the the weight of the biomass occupied by the producers will be much larger when you compare it with higher trophic levels so the number of plants trees that you have will have more weight than the number of lions which occupies the tertiary or the quaternary level so that is the reason when it comes to terrestrial ecosystem please remember the pyramid of biomass is always upright but if you compare it with an aquatic ecosystem the lowest level is occupied by either zooplankton or phytoplankton that might grow and reproduce at a rapid rate but at the topmost level you'll have whales and sharks which have tremendous weight because of which an aquatic ecosystem when it comes to a pyramid of biomass is always inverted please remember this terrestrial ecosystem pyramid of biomass upright aquatic ecosystem pyramid of biomass inverted because whale sharks will have greater weight in total when compared to the total weight of phytoplankton in an aquatic ecosystem and unlike the pyramid of numbers the orientation of the pyramids will not change uh, also please remember uh, when it comes to biomass the unit for measuring is grams per meter square or kgs per meter square fine next we will consider the pyramid of energy now the pyramid of energy is a pyramid of productivity which depicts the flow of energy through the food chain since the pyramid of energy depicts the flow of energy and the loss of thermodynamics says that there will always be loss of energy at each level of transfer the pyramid of energy will always be an upright pyramid so in the last video we did we did discuss the 10% law i did tell you that 
as we move from one trophic level to another trophic level the amount of energy which is available to the uh, next trophic level is only 10% of the amount of energy and therefore the amount of energy available for organisms reduces from one trophic level to another trophic level we have already discussed this in the previous video so since the same 10% law applies over here and the amount of energy reduces as you move from one trophic level to another trophic level a pyramid of energy is always upright and it always depicts the productivity within that ecosystem so since the pyramid of energy is always upright and it is and it will always follow the 10% law the best way to study the interaction between organisms in an ecosystem and a food chain is always the pyramid of energy when compared to both pyramid of biomass and pyramid of uh, numbers uh, one last point over here i just wanted to mention that the uh, pyramid of energy also helps us to explain the concept of biological magnification or biomagnification since there's a tendency for toxic substances to increase in concentration as we move progressively with higher trophic levels so this concept of biomagnification i'll be covering it i'll be explaining it in the next video but i just want you to remember this concept of pyramid of energy when we move on to biomagnification okay so uh, i did tell you that the pyramid of energy is more advantageous when compared to uh, the other two pyramids so the reason being that there are no inverted pyramids obviously the shape of the pyramid neither the orientation of the pyramid changes uh, different ecosystems can be easily compared because it does not change in shape neither does it change in orientation also it takes into account the rate of productivity therefore the pyramid of energy is the best option to study an ecosystem and the interaction of organisms within that so you can just pause this video over here and just use this image to compare the different types of pyramids that you may have okay so uh, a question for revision uh, the question says an inverted pyramid of number and an inverted pyramid of biomass are respectively seen in okay so you have a grassland and tree ecosystem c and tree ecosystem tree and c ecosystem and finally the last option is c and grassland ecosystem now i did tell you that when it comes to a pyramid of number uh, the shape or the orientation of the pyramid changes but always remember that generally generally we would say a grassland ecosystem a forest ecosystem or a pond ecosystem is always upright but when it comes to tree ecosystem it is inverted that is the general case so a tree ecosystem when it comes to pyramid of numbers is always inverted and the sea ecosystem in a pyramid of biomass it will be inverted as well that also we have covered in this particular video therefore the option or the correct answer is c so uh, i hope this particular concept of ecological pyramids is clear all these things under environment and ecology is nothing but revision i'm pretty sure all these things would have been covered under biology when in school or college uh, however if you do have any doubts please do write to us in the comment section thank you